Isso. Naca. Ladies and gentlemen, can we welcome everyone to our Lord Craigavon Memorial Service this afternoon. And this year we remember the 75th anniversary of the death of Lord Craigavon. I'm delighted to have you along on behalf of the organisers. Can I welcome everybody and thank you very much for your attendance. It's very much uh, appreciated. Lord Craigavon was born James Craig in Sydenham, Belfast, the son of a wealthy whiskey distiller. James Craig lived in a large house overlooking Belfast Lock. You all know it's called Craigavon House. Craig himself was educated in Scotland, in Edinburgh, and in 1900, January 1900, he enlisted in the 3rd Royal Irish Rifles and went on to serve in the 2nd Boer War. He was then seconded to the Imperial Yeomanry, rising to the rank of Captain. On returning home in 1906, he turned to politics and was elected as MP for East Down, serving there from 1906 until 1918. From 1918 until 1921, he represented Middown. He was made a baronet in 1918, and in 1927, he became the first Viscount.
Craig Alvin. In 1910, Craig, knowing his own limitations, <laughs> persuaded none other than Edward Carson to leave his law practice and become leader of the Ulster Unionist Party at that time. Craig himself organised the great demonstration at Craigavon House where over 50,000 men gathered. And this was to show Edward Carson that the people were behind him and his leadership. He also organised the Balmoral Review. And in 1912, Craig himself was the main organiser of the Ulster Covenant and the signing of that at City Hall. Now, Edward Carson was the face of the government, but James Craig, without doubt, was the mastermind behind it. Craig rallied the Ulster Unionist opposition to Home Rule and further went on to organise the setting up of the Ulster Volunteers and the buying of arms for these volunteers. And as we know, these same volunteers went on to be the nucleus of the 36th Ulster Division during the First World War. After the Great War, Craig succeeded Carson as leader of the Ulster Unionist Party. In 1921, the new Northern Ireland House of Commons was created and two weeks before the opening of Parliament at Stormont, Craig was appointed as the first Prime Minister of Northern Ireland. James Craig was a staunch member of the Orange Institution and a man who loved the Word of God and had faith in Christ as his Saviour. James Craig is often misquoted as saying a Protestant Parliament for a Protestant people. But in this house, he said that in respect of what was said in the South, where they claimed that it was a Catholic state for a Catholic people. And Craig then said, if that was so, it would be a Protestant parliament for a Protestant state. And he said that history would go down to see which one would prosper the best. His money and his faith was that Parliament here in Northern Ireland would prosper more than the Catholic South, South. And so he was proved right. James Craig, Lord Craigavon, was still Prime Minister when he died peacefully on the 24th of September 1940, having served five terms as Prime Minister, winning five general elections. He was buried here at Stormont Estate and was succeeded as Prime Minister by John Miller Andrews. Today we are gathered here on the 75th anniversary of this great man's death. And whereas all men have frailties and faults, James Craig is certainly a man to be held up as a great role model for our people. He was a great Unionist, a staunch Protestant, a man of faith, an outstanding leader of Unionism. Today, we remember, today we once again recognise his great achievements. And like Craig, in 1910, we also too look today for a leader of Unionism. May God grant our prayer as he granted the prayers of Craig over 100 years ago. 100 years ago, God blessed this province with great men. Edward Carson, James Craig, Major Fred Crawford. May God bless us today with men like these, men of faith. May God bless us as we gather today to pay our respects to Lord Craigavon. May we never forget our history. In God we trust. Valiant red flowers, 
Remember the heroes we won't see again. Remember their hardships, their dying, their pain. In wet Flanders trenches or dry desert sands, remember their courage as they all made their stand. Some lie where they fell on the battlefield ground, where the poppy fields grow in the war ravaged land. Valiant red flower with well watered stems, watered by the blood of 10,000 brave men. Some lie in graveyards row upon row, some names well remembered, while others unknown. To these men we owe much and can only repay by recalling their deeds on Remembrance Day, by wearing the poppy and bowing the head and remembering the sacrifice made by those brave men. For their lives was the price they were willing to pay so we can be standing here free men today. Ulster volunteer prayer. O oh, Heavenly Father, here we pray thee the prayer of thy children who call upon thee in their time of danger and difficulty. Forgive me, I pray thee, for all my sins which I have so often committed against thee in thought, word, and make me ready to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Fill me with the Holy Spirit that I may know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. Strengthen 
and uphold me in all difficulties and dangers. Keep me faithful unto death, patient in suffering, calm in thy service, and confident in the assurance that thou, Lord, will direct all things to the glory of thy name and the welfare of my church and country. Bless the King whom we serve and all the royal family. O Lord, grant me thy grace that no word or act of mine may be spoken or done rashly, hastily or with anger towards those who differ from me. Bless all my comrades in the Ulster Volunteer Force and make me loving and gentle, obedient to my leaders and faithful to my promises. And in thine own good time, bring peace to Ireland. All this I beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. On behalf of the Anchor Psalm Association, I'd like to thank all our visitors for joining us on our annual memorial service in memory of one of Ulster's greatest sons. We have been holding this pilgrimage now for five years and we are always delighted at the support we receive, especially as most of the time the weather is atrocious. Can I thank most of all Stephen Moutry, MLA, who without question secures permission for us to be here every year. Davy Martin for his as ever brilliant and inspiring address. George Spencer Bugler. Stephen Goff for the friendship and continued support he, he gives us association. And last but not least, Craig Avon Patterson Boys for playing us up the hill and for their unwavering support every year. Thank you all. That's the last one, please. Fall out! The colour party!